interwebs. This is Killbot the Gamer here. Lately, and by mean lately I mean the last couple weeks, there's been a lot of news out there on the Twitterverse about Gamergate. Now, from what I understand, it depends on who you ask as to what this is. If you ask gamers, you can get various reactions like the developers and, and journalists are calling us misogynists and racists and homophobes and and all that and others might say well i'm upset because journalism is failing us it's not i can't trust what is printed anymore in the gaming world it's gotten kind of incestuous Figuratively speaking, if it was literally incest, I think we'd be having a completely different discussion. <clears throat> so I wanted to add my two cents, because all my viewers have been saying, Killbot, what's your opinion? And we'd love to hear your thoughts. And so I'm going to give them to you. Because they're the right opinions, and the right thoughts, and everyone should have them. First off... Watching them fight is kind of like watching your parents fight. You love them both. You hope that they can get over this and get back together. At the same time, you're like, oh my goodness, do they still love each other? Are they going to split up? Is my mom going to start dating my gym teacher? Are they gonna, Who am I going to live with? Can I leverage this guilt and get a PS4 at one house and an Xbox One at the other? So... I can kind of see both sides of the issue a little bit. <clears throat> Let me start with the gaming side, because I think I'm a little bit more empathetic towards them. First off, no one likes to be called names, okay? No one. Whether it's Fatty or Four Eyes or Killing Machine or Farty McFartsalot. <sighs> Farty McFartsalot, that hurt. Anyway. So what a lot of gamers are finding themselves is on the receiving end of a lot of accusations that they're innocent of. They're not haters. They are polite when they are online. They try and get along. They are respectful. But that's not enough. Apparently, you know, a broad, you know, a whole group of people is being tarred with the same brush because of the actions of a few. And there's a word for that. That's you know, stereotyping. I mean, I don't think many people would would be, you know, encouraged to throw out accusations like, hey, look at that Mexican taking a nap. I bet, you know, all Mexicans are lazy. No, not good. We frown upon stuff like that. It is wrong to tar an entire group of people by the actions of one or a few. And I think that's what a lot of gamers feel like, is they're being tarred for the actions of a few. Okay? So that's that one aspect of the gamers. The other one that I've heard is this is about ethics. Journalism and the developers are kind of in bed together, you know. And in some cases, literally in bed. And, you know, it's commonly said, oh, this is just the reported stuff. If you include stuff that's probably not, not reported, then the number is much higher. So we're left to wonder how close are the relationships between developers and the people who make the games and the people who are supposed to cover them unbiasedly. Um, and it, and I mean, it, it, it's also kind of a double betrayal because I think a lot of people in the gaming community would love to be those gaming journalists or love to be those gaming developers. And they're like, hey, you guys are... I look up to you and you're letting me down. Now I can't trust whether this gaming review is accurate. Or, you know... Yeah. It just sucks. Now on the gaming developer, female gaming side of this whole... You know, oh, there's misogyny and there's hate <clears throat> from these gamers. It's true. I think there's too much. I think there has to be an awareness that it is a small a small percentage. But I mean well let's look at it this way. Say there's 500 million gamers 
in the world. There's probably a lot more, but let's say 500 million. And that's like console, PC, mobile gaming. And 10% of them care enough that they go to these websites and Twitter and they like contribute socially to these gaming communes. That is 50 million people. Now let's assume that 1% of these people are complete and utter dicks. That is 500,000 dicks running around on the internet saying inappropriate and hateful things. And from a gaming developer's or female gamer's perspective, that's a lot. I mean, you guys probably remember high school, right? I mean, it just took one or two people to ruin your entire year. And suddenly you're thrown into this online community where it's not, you know, a couple thousand people. It is hundreds of millions of people. And there are a lot more people who can make your life miserable. So for their, from their perspective, I'm sure it looks like a tsunami of hatefulness. So I can, I can respect their worries as well. I mean, as to what is to be done, I mean, from the journalistic ethic perspective, I think there needs to be some sort of, I don't know, code of conduct that needs to come up, being open and transparent, like, hey, I had an, a relationship with this person, and so I am not going to cover their games, or if they're a developer, I'm, we're not going to let that person cover the game. We're going to, like, ask for another reporter. Um, from a game perspective, if they're, you know, they're concerned about the hate and they're wanting more diversity, I mean, this is another thing that kind of irritates me. So I'm a consumer of games, okay? I don't make them. I don't hire people to make them. I just go to the store, plop down my money, and walk out with the game that I think looks kind of fun. So if this is something that you guys are worried about, like there needs to be more, rep you know, the, the company needs to be more representative of society or more diverse, then that's on you. I mean, that's a conversation you guys can have at your next meeting. But to go out into the world and say, this is wrong, it's horrible. Um, it's like, okay, I can't do anything about it but thank you it's yeah as for us gamers i think we need to be more self-policing okay so that means if you are playing call of duty or some sort of multiplayer game and someone is being a dick then you need to boot them okay just say you're being an, a dick and you have to go by now, you know, maybe you don't have that power in that particular game, so you might have to drop out. Just let, you know, I'm not going to play with you anymore. I'm going to take my ball and go home. There's no shame in that. Or, if you are on Twitch, oh my goodness, this is, you know, you go onto a Twitch channel run by, you know, an attractive woman playing the latest, I don't know, latest game, and you read the comments that she gets, they are vile. So my thoughts are there for self-policing self is we just have to not remain silent anymore because I don't know how they do it. They just kind of like respond to the comments that are polite and ignore somehow. I don't know how they can ignore it, but uh, yeah, we need to step in and into the, those chat rooms and say, hey, stop being a dick, Mr. Dick Dickerson. So that's my thoughts. Let's just try and let everyone be a little bit more responsible for their own behavior and the behavior of those like in the immediate that they come in contact with. Let's call each other out if we do something inappropriate. But let's not, uh, gaming developers or journalists, just tar a whole bunch of people with one brush and say, hey, you guys are all like this. Because that's stereotyping and it's wrong. Of course, I'm just stereotyping right there by saying all game developers are doing it, but they're not. I'm going to stop talking now before I vanish into a black hole of cogn cognitive dissonance.